um, to hear our speaker. Uh, I just want to let you know that we've got a couple of programs coming up uh, in the next month or so. Uh, Sanity for the holidays, in case any of you are starting to feel stressed like I am, is Thursday, October 30th at 7 p.m. Uh, if you are into yoga, uh, we have a recurring yoga class every Wednesday night at 5.30. And then our genealogy club meets the second Monday of every month, and that's at 6 p.m. And we also have some holiday programs coming up, so watch for those in the summer. Uh, I want to thank Ed White for coming tonight, he, and for the Friends of the Library for sponsoring him. Uh, Mr. White is, um, is, has a poultry, so poultry science degree. Uh, he's taught poultry science at Essex Agricultural School, for, and he's worked there for over 30 years. He is also the poultry barn uh, head honcho expert at the Topsfield Fair. So anything you want to know about poultry, he can probably <clears throat> tell you about it. Anyway, my name is Ed White, or better known for people around who know me, Egg White. Uh, <laughs> that's my name, Egg White. And my daughter, who is my clerk at the barn, is Little Egg. Uh, and we have a good time. Uh, I have done backyard poultry and poultry many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. I taught a course in backyard poultry at a baggy for probably 10 to 15 years, every spring, every fall, and it got so big for a while, I was doing two a week, spring and fall. And it was a 10-week course, it was a wonderful course, it was a 10-week course. We started off the course the first week with 100 baby chicks. Meat birds, meat birds, okay? And if you know anything about today's commercial meat production birds, in eight weeks, you have a full-size broiler meat marketable and back then we had a slaughterhouse at the end and the last class was two classes or more was an all-day saturday class where we processed all our chickens and everybody went home with chickens in their hand were all dressed and beautiful and it was well worth the money they paid they had to pay for the chicks and the grain and it was a pretty good deal we also talked a lot about laying and all all everything goes along with it and then kind of backyard stuff died out for a while it's very interesting how this comes and goes uh, backyard everything has just, the resurgence is amazing. I think all of us are a lot more cognitive of what we eat. We're a lot more careful about where we're buying our food, what, what's in our food. Um, you hear all the horror stories about the cancers, the weird diseases that go on, all these things that happen, and you have to ask yourself, what's going on? Um, so, raising poultry is a really, really wonderful way for you people to start to think about producing your own food, and it's pretty easy to do. If people that have chickens know they're pretty minimal, pretty low maintenance. You can pretty you follow a few main, main rules. Um, you know, why do I want to have chickens at home? Uh, a, they're very easy to take care of. Food and water and protection. They need cover and they need protection. Uh, I will say right away, this picture, I put this one up purposely, the one thing wrong with this picture, especially for Riley, what would that be? You think? A lot of fertilizer. No, <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, um, there's no cage around them, and there's a lot of animals around here. Oh, he got it! He got it! There's, they're out in the backyard. If you're out there with them, it's okay. But I'm telling you, a red tail will come down and take it, boom, the chicken's gone. The chicken is gone. And we won't talk about the neighbor's dog. All the fox, all the mink, all the raccoons, or all those things that come in your chicken coop at night and you kill all your chickens, because they do. And you're, we are surrounded along the coast here with more little critters, coyotes, the whole game. So it's really, really unsafe to let your chickens out loose unless you're with them. Unless you're with them. And you can bring them back in, have them go in their pen, and let them stay in their pen. They love to be outside. They love to be outside. They love to scratch on the ground. They like to pick up worms, pick up bugs, pick up anything, take baths in the sand in your, in your pen. Uh, don't think if you have chickens in a pen, it's going to look like this very long. They will eat all that grass, they will dig in all that grass, and it'll be just a luminous surface by the time they're through with it. But they love it. They love it. They love to get out there and play. And they'll go back in the chicken coop to lay their eggs. They don't lay their eggs out there. Um, it's a great family activity. It really is. The kids can walk and collect eggs. They get, they get excited about it. And anything we can do today to work with our children, our kids, to make them part of our family and what we're doing is real, real, a real positive. 
Uh, you can see this girl's pretty happy with her chickens, and he probably has them all named. And those are probably a conchid or a buff sex link, uh, an egg bird. They're all pretty much laying. You can tell, you can tell they're laying by the bright red comb and wattles. That's, show, that's showing you a mature chicken. A mature chicken that doesn't have bright red comb and wattles, they're all dried up and pink, is not laying for whatever reason. Um, so this is a little thing. If you see a bunch of chickens in your yard, you're not getting any eggs, and you notice the common wattles are all shriveled up, they're not laying. There's other ways you can tell too. You can pick them up and look at their vent if they're at the other end. If the vent's real, real, real small and all yellow, no pigmentation loss, they're not laying eggs. Uh, and that's important to know. As she lays egg, that vent gets bigger and bigger, and all the coloration goes from yellow to white because she's putting that coloration into her eggs. Okay, and you'll notice it on her beak and you notice it on her legs. You notice her legs going from yellowish to whitish and her beak also. You can almost tell how long a chicken is, has been laying just by the coloration. Because they go in a certain method, and I'm not going to try to teach you right now, but there's a certain method in which this coloration leaves. Um, and you all want fresh eggs. Anybody here? Never truly had a fresh egg. Wow, that's just one, two. You cannot believe the difference between a grocery store egg and a fresh egg. You know, and I'll show you later on in this. But fresh eggs, you break them out of the shell, and they still, the yolk stands up nice and high. There's a thick albumin and a thin albumin. As those eggs get older and older, the thin, thick albumin gets more watery. The yolk settles down and spreads out, and you find you can't you can't do a good job hard boiling or, or um, over easy with eggs because the yolk of the eggs they break. Nice fresh eggs they won't break on you, and you won't believe the difference in the, how it tastes, how it looks, and how you can work with it. But and this goes to us eggs here is you know brown eggs, white eggs, and those are probably aracuna eggs. Aracuna lay the different colored eggs. You see, I see a lot, lot more and more of those at Top Field Fair at the egg, egg exhibit. People like to have something fancy. And the birds that produce these are pretty, are pretty, are very pretty, very cute, very nice. Uh, remember, uh, we in the Northeast eat brown eggs. The rest of the country eats white eggs. And we eat them mainly because of tradition. Uh, there's no difference between white and brown eggs nutritionally. No difference whatsoever. If you're trying to save a buck, buy away. Uh, you want eggs that are more local, brown eggs are local eggs, local eggs are fresh, uh, buy brown eggs. Uh, I support brown eggs, I'm a brown egg person. The, some of the differences you would find if you raise both birds, brown egg, bir brown egg birds tend to lay a larger, larger egg in the course of its lifetime, uh, tend to have thicker shells where leghorns, which are a lot smaller bird, may produce a few more eggs a year, but they're a little bit smaller in general, and you know, they're just not really as suited to the northeast, as it's how harsh winters as the brown egg birds, are a lot bigger birds. Um, but you can't even find double A eggs in grocery stores around here. Every egg you produce in your farm will be a double A egg. <coughs> double A is the US government's highest Standard for eggs, double A, A, which you see most of the time, A, and B and C. You don't see they get used for, you know, further products, further processed products. Uh, and a, a big, big benefit in backyard chickens, believe it or not, is compost. If anybody here doesn't compost, you're crazy. If you're throwing that stuff away, you're crazy. It's so easy to make a compost pile of anything. I've seen a lab where you can buy an elaborate compost bin. Uh, I throw everything in the house, eggshells, unfortunately eggshells don't break down really well, so you, I kind of crush them up first before I put them in there. You can also use eggshells if you dry them out, crush them up, and throw them back in the chicken pen or in the feed. They will eat it for extra calcium. Calcium is what they make eggshells of. As birds get older, you'll start noticing then your eggshells are getting thinner. 
They don't look as good. They get they, they touch them and crack them easily. They need more calcium. You can give them crushed up old eggshells that are dried up. You can buy a product called Calcite, which we'll talk about later. It gives a calcium supplement. But as the laying hen gets older, she needs additional calcium. She's pulling that calcium right out of her bones for her eggs. And when you give her that calcium, it has to go back into her bones first. So if you have a, a, a very thin shell egg problem, you probably should be feeding these birds some calcium or something. But you can also give them egg shells. Just crush them up and dry them up. Um, different colored birds, those are all fancy birds. I don't think bird up there is more of a TNC versus a commercial, except for that one. That's a Bob Brock, very common bird. Um, I just showed you a basket of eggs. Um, and that's more like the basket of eggs you're going to take out of your barn, probably. A little dirty. You got to clean them out. Uh, usually, I will tell you, if you keep your nest boxes, if you keep your nest boxes clean and put new shavings in them often, you shouldn't see this. You shouldn't see this. And if they're laying eggs on the floor, you need to get them up off the floor, quick. You don't want them laying on the floor, you want them laying in a nest. And you want to collect those eggs two times a day, on wall. Don't let them sit there, you let them sit there, temptation happens. What does that mean? Birds, by nature, are very cannibalistic. A, if they break an egg by accident, they will try it, and all of a sudden, every bird in the pen will try it. Then you'll start to find egg eaters, and they will start going after other eggs and eating them. And the way, one of the ways you can tell who it is, you'll notice around their beak is covered with shavings, because that yolk is stuck on their beak, and they walk around doing the pen, and they get shavings up. You can usually tell the culprit. And you need to get her out of there, because she's not going to stop. She's not going to stop. Egg eating is a real, real issue with birds. Um, as eating each other, if you have a dead bird in your pen and you don't take it out, they might go after it. And once they get the flavor of it, be careful. I don't mean to gross you out, but I don't mean to understand reality. Please, it's reality. Birds by nature are cannibalistic. So you've got to make sure you're doing everything to not let that happen. These are the main breeds you probably have all heard about. Um, Rhode, Island, Rhode Island Reds been around for a long time. Plymouth Rocks, Bob Rocks, New Hampshire Reds, and Lake Hollands are the white egg birds. <coughs> you know, I'm not really pushing here for a backyard flocks up here. The brown egg birds are best. I do not personally, however, <coughs> I do not personally like. Not, I shouldn't say like. I'd rather not get the pure birds. I would rather get the hybrid caught crosses that are called sex link, sex link birds. Uh, that's a red. Again, they're all, no, again, notice the cone, they're all laying. It's over the side, but the cone, they're all laying. That's a New Hampshire, that's a leg horn. A lot bigger cone than waters on leg horns. Um, sex link crosses all through hybrid bigger, so they're the best of both breeds. The most common one is a black sex link, which is a cross between a rather red rooster and Bob Rock hen. And the sex link part of it, when those chicks hatch, when those chicks hatch, every one of them can be sexed right by looking at them. The males have a little white spot up here, the females don't. And that's hundred percent. By that kind of a sex link cross, you see it right in birds, that the chicks will have a white spot, they roost it. Uh, I would recommend to all of you when you, when and if you buy a, a chicks, um, I would recommend you don't get them straight run. You, that means just the way they come out, just the way you get them. You want to get pullets are females. Pullet is a female hen, a young female hen. You don't, you don't want to have a bunch of roosters around because A, your neighbors are going to hate you. And contrary to popular belief, roosters do not crow at sunup. Roosters crow from sunup to sunup. In the middle of the night, two o'clock on the morning, you hear about that crowing. Cock of town, already sees a light and start crowing. And Davis don't like that. And I'm telling you, more and more towns, which we get into later, don't like that. They abandon. If switch you just put in last year, a whole new poultry ordinance, unless you have over so many acres, you cannot have a rooster. And most of the towns around them are coming up with new chicken bylaws, if you will. Uh, they're really reluctant to let you all out have roosters. 
which is tough if you want to raise BNDs or want to raise birds, you really need to have a rooster. Uh, be, be, realize that when you buy eggs in a grocery store, 99% of the eggs you buy have never seen a rooster. There's no roosters, they buy them as pullets, and they raise them as pullets and they lay eggs. They don't need a rooster to lay eggs, okay? Uh, it's just a natural occurrence that happens, and we bred these birds. Remember, all these birds, by nature, are supposed to lay a clutch of eggs, a dozen eggs, 18 eggs, whatever, and set on them and hatch them, reproduce their species. That's all they're supposed to do, is lay a clutch of eggs a year, raise those babies up, and the cycle of life goes on. We have, through selective breeding and other methods, which we'll talk about, uh, managed to get these girls right here. These girls are producing about 300 eggs a year. 300 eggs a year versus a dozen. And most of these birds I'm talking about right here, we have kind of we've tried to breed broodiness out of them. Broodiness is when she wants to set on eggs. She doesn't, he stops laying, she wants to set on eggs. And if you leave eggs in your, in your egg, egg box with a no collect them all the time, you may have a bird that may go broody on you. And the only way you can do is get them out of there. Just get them out of the pen. I saw her, I think, on Facebook the other day. She's got old Facebook. Um, dunking them in, putting them in nicely, ice cold water, and holding them in there. And the kid let the, let the bird go, and the bird was just enjoying it. And I stopped it. Stopped them going broody. I can't tell you why, but I saw it on Facebook just one of those accident things. So, anyway, these sex things, if you go to Agway, the co op, those places that sell baby chicks, most of what you'll find are these commercial strain of birds. Uh, black selection, which is my favorite, personally, I like them, the nice birds. Again, notice the common waddles. Uh, you can tell she's laying, notice her shanks of her legs are white, not yellow. Her beak is white at the bottom, not yellow. All that's going into the eggs. Uh, a buff sex link. A buff sex <coughs> for, for simplicity's sake, buff sex links are the same as conquered sex links is the same as um, salmon sex links. There's three or four names for buff, but essentially they are the same <coughs> word. Um, then meat birds, today's commercial meat birds, if you buy meat birds, in less than, less than seven weeks now, up to like six and a half weeks, you get a really nice sized bridle. Not fryer, bridle. You know, fryer that you buy cheap at the grocery store. The next one's up a broilers and they go to roosters. Uh, that's how fast they grow. And they break for one thing. If you look at these birds, you look at their breast here, and you notice it, but big, big, thick, big breast. Okay, when you buy a chicken, you want a lot of white meat, a lot of nice breast meat, and same thing with turkeys. So they're bred to produce this kind of this kind of meat, and they're bred to produce it rapidly. Rapid. It scares me how fast we can get these birds, put these birds to uh, market size. I'll, I'll just mention with this, because I didn't mention it anyplace else, there are not a lot of places around you can have your chickens slaughtered, taken care of. Um, there is a man in Georgetown on Jewett Street that will do it, that does it. Um, and I don't know anybody else around, except for maybe some of you do it on your own. Uh, it's not a hard thing, but, you know, I'll leave it like that. There's a man in Georgetown that does it, and uh, you got to know what he charges a bird, but it's not that bad. And, you know, it's pretty simple, and you get a nice bird back. Um, and another thing that's really changed is, let me ask a question, I suppose. How many of you people in this room when you go to a, a butcher, butcher shop, know what fowl is, F-O-W-L. What's fowl? It's just an older bird, it's yeah. tough. Fowl is an old hen. So all the old spent hens were slaughtered and put in the crock pot, I put in the pot, and cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked, and it made the nicest flavored you know, chicken, whatever, that you could have. The old hens really, really tasted good, but you had to boil them and boil them and boil them. Um, today, they go to Campbell Soup, believe it or not. They're probably the biggest, biggest person that takes all the hens in this country is Campbell Soup. Um, 
This is an Aracuna. Uh, they come in many different colors, but they all have these little tufts right here in their face. They all have these little tufts. And I have found out, through my own research, that each bird, they say they lay Easter egg colors. Each bird has her own color. One will lay a greenish egg, and the next bird, next bird will lay a bluish egg, and one will lay an off brown egg, kind of off brown green. But that one bird doesn't lay all the different color eggs. So it's just a genetic coloration thing. Uh, and they're kind of cool. I see more and more Aracuna eggs for sale. I see more and more Aracuna eggs at the fair, like I told you, being shown. Uh, and I think when Aracuna does an Aracuna egg, one like second best in show this year. They're beautiful, beautiful eggs. Are Aracuna eggs um, smaller? Than uh, in, general, in general, they're a little smaller, but they're, they're right up there. I'd say they'd be, their average egg size would be large. Large, extra large. Where brown egg birds, these sex things, you're talking extra large jumbo. Okay, and the leghorns, large, extra large. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if you've gone to any poultry shows, some of you may have them. There are so many different kinds of bantams. Bantams are just small little birds. And they are so fun, they're so fun to breed, they're so fun to have. Um, it's a Millie Fleur here, um, pretty strange bird. Uh, I, I had some other ones up there, I took them off. Um, no, excuse me, that's a Millie Fleur up there, I apologize. And that's a Silky right there. And I'm not sure what that, that's a seed break right here. But people love to raise, but they get smaller, smaller. They work fine, but they're small. And they will go broody. And if you want to hatch your own birds and have one rooster, you want to have one of these kind of birds, that one of the big birds that's fancy, that will go broody on you. <coughs> but then you're going you're to breed out some of the traits you want. <coughs> so it's your decision how long to keep it. Um, if you're thinking of getting bantams, you should get involved or check out the American Bantam Association. Uh, we use at the fair, any, any show in the country that shows birds, bantams, has to use this book here as a guide for the birds. Every bird has every single trait that has to be to be an award-winning bird. And it's hard to believe how many traits they check out. Uh, we're not quite that serious a top field fair because we have a lot more mom and pop type of birds. We want to make sure everybody has a good time. Uh, some of the birds at Top Field Fair that we win a blue ribbon may not get a blue ribbon at a big sanctioned show. But we're like, well, more mom and pop. Uh, where can you get chicks? You know, you got to start somewhere. <coughs> and where do I get chicks? Right now, <coughs> the place I know we can get chicks around here is a co-op across from Top Field Fair grounds. Uh, Agway Home and Garden, Davis Home and Garden used to be Agway. Uh, and both of those are just in the spring. And they have a lot of them. But my experience is most of what they have are these sex lane crosses. And they're just beautiful birds. They're beautiful birds. They're day old. Two or three days old. Uh, and you get a girl right in town, Ashley Wilde, you got her website. She's got a great website. She sells all kinds of unique, interesting birds. So she's a one of your own. I would say that you know these people that the co-op in Agway uh, every spring now have chicks and they sell out everything we have. Uh, you could have bought chicks last week at Top Field Fair from all the chicks I have during the whole fair. We give to the kids for the FFA auction and they auction them off. I don't, I don't, I don't know what lots a dozen a piece or twenty five a piece, but we just give them to the kids so the kids can earn the money. And they're all good egg birds. So those all come from Hardy's Hatchery or Hardy's. Um, make sure you know what the regulations are regarding keeping a poultry. I wouldn't be surprised if Raleigh maybe doesn't have any right now. But as more and more people are going to start raising chickens and are, they're going to have to come up with regulations. And you people in this room need to be the ones that go to the public hearings, go to the public meetings to make sure it goes your way and not someone. I was helping out in the Ipswich one, and once I said what I wanted to say and I heard what I, what I was listening to, I left. I didn't come back again. They wanted me to be participating in it, but they were getting so unreasonable, so unreasonable. 
you can only have six chickens, you can only do this, you can only do that, you have to get a license, you have to get, they want the Board of Public Health involved, and this and that. I talked to them, and I talked to them and let the animals, animal control officer do it, which does it now, all he does is check your birds, and he complains, he goes and checks it. They wanted to make it into a big, big, big thing. And I know a lot more towns are trying to come up with new chicken rules. You know, not my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying, not my, not my backyard. So that's why I say check out the rules, check out the regulations. Um, most towns that I hear around, most city, city towns, um, so I'm thinking of Stoneham right now, I just heard about that one yesterday, do not allow roosters. And don't think you're gonna keep them quiet, because <laughs> you won't. Uh, but please, you know, there's all the towns are working on guidelines, working on new regulations. Um, if they don't have them in town, I guarantee they will be, because they will be compliant and so they're going to have to deal with it somehow. And you people need to get there and make sure it goes in a manner that isn't outrageous. Because they can set all these weird rules and you can be fine yourself. This isn't worth it. <laughs> it isn't worth it. Uh, but just a pen of how she's checking. She raises a lot of bands and a lot of different show birds. Everything she raises, she sells. She runs out every year. She does a great job. A great job. Um, and there's a bunch of male auto places. Uh, Murray McMurray's been around 1917. Uh, they do a wonderful job. They mail to your home from Murray McMurray, from the hatchery, and also the post office. Sometimes they won't put them in the truck. The post office will call you up, come pick up your chicks. Remember, a baby chick, when it hatches, can go up to three days without any food or water. But once they start getting food or water, you can't stop them. And that's how they can ship these chicks all over the world, which they do. I worked for a company, Cobb. Cobb was the world leader in broiler production. And they ship you know, tens of thousands of broilers all over the world every other day. And the chicks are just fine. But once you take them out, you've got to feed them right away. Right away. Uh, so anyway, Marty McMurray, uh, that's a really good one. If you write that down, you want to look it up. My comment of all of these, that I, I think I have three on here. The comment I have is where it says it right up there. Order early if you want something in particular. So they only have so many birds, they only produce so many eggs. And first come, first serve. So I'd even say if you're interested in a certain type of bird and you want to order it through the mail, this would be the time to be looking and thinking about it and getting an order in for next spring, believe it or not. Uh, Whitworth Bees, they've been, they've been around a long time. Uh, not, as, not as well known as Murray McMurray, uh, Strongbirds has been around forever. And they have a doing, again, auto do a wonderful job. Oh, what do I do? Um, if nothing else, call them up, or you go on their website and get a catalog. They're free, do what you might like. Oh, it's a pretty interesting chicken. Strongbirds. There's a phone number in the website, but it's a pretty long website. I'm pretty sure if you just type in www.strongbirdchickens, you'll strongbirds chickens, you'll get to their website. If they want to order a catalog. Uh, if you want to do your own incubation, it's something you can do. We do it at the fair, uh, and it's probably the most popular, one of the most popular displays at Topfield Fair is the chicks hatching. People spend hours upon hours, mom and dad say, come on, let's go. And the kids, no, I want to watch them hatch. And it happens all day long. Uh, they're different, a chicken takes 21 days to hatch. And again, remember, again, 99.5% of your eggs aren't fertilized, so they would never hatch. They are not fertilized. And the difference between a fertile and non-fertile egg is one sperm cell. That's it. People think fertilized eggs are so much better for you. There's no difference. One sperm cell. It's the only difference, okay? Uh, because they're not allowed to start to grow and, and be, be replicated. So um, anyway, 21 days, and you have a, have a baby chick. Uh, you can, if you go to my fairgrounds, look, look at my chicks. You look at the end of their beak, the very tip of their beak, you'll see an egg tooth, a little tooth sticking up. That's how they get out of the shells. It's an egg tooth on the end of, their, end of their beak. After two or three days, the egg tooth falls off. They don't eat it anymore. 
One reason only. And all birds get out of the shells the same way, with an egg tooth. So next time you see baby chicks, if they have the egg tooth still on, they're baby babies. Um, in terms of, yes, incubation time may vary depending on humidity, moisture, all the things you need to know about um, hatching your own chicks. It's not hard to hatch chicks. You want to put them in the incubator, make sure you have it at the right temperature. You want to roll the eggs three or four times a day. Go the hand gets down there and rolls those eggs around so they develop normally. And if you keep them on one side the whole time, they will not develop right. That's why a hen always is constantly turning her, returning her eggs. Um, and it's very, very critical that the last part, the last two or three days, that you have very, very high humidity in there. Even enough to get a little hand sprayer and spray inside the incubator two or three times a day to get it up even higher. Because once they pip, pip is that first hole from the egg tube. It's that first hole, <gasps> air! And they start pipping right around the top of that shell. When they get it all done, they just squeeze and they spread out and they pop out of the shell. So it's pretty cool. But if you don't have enough moisture, what happens is the inside shell membranes will stick to them. Stick to their down, stick to their, fur, their, hair, their feathers, excuse me, and um, they'll dry on there and they can't get up. They'll die. So humidity is very, very important in incubation. Um, brooding and rearing. Uh, brooding is you know, raising baby chicks. You all need to know, you pick up your chicks in that way or wherever. Uh, you want to start them off at 95 degrees Fahrenheit for the first week. 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you can use a light bulb. I recommend an infrared light bulb. And I prefer the red to the white because red doesn't bring out colors of other birds where they'll pick at. Believe it or not, if it's really, really bright, they'll notice those little marks and they'll try to pick at the other chick and they can draw blood and that can start it. Believe it or not, simple as that, that could start it once you get the flavor of blood. Um, <coughs> You want to drop the, drop the temperature five degrees a week. Every week, lower it 95, 90, 85, 80. Get down to 70 or so, you can take the heat away. The best way to lower it probably is just to raise your light bulb up. You're not going to be raising massive amounts of birds. If you're having a heat lamp, just raise it up. You know, and you want to test, you want to test it at back height, back height of the chickens. You know, if you want like right about here, is where you want to put a thermometer. That's where you want to see 95 degrees. Okay? Uh, and every week you're going to raise it up a little bit. You don't want to have any drafts. Just like human beings, just like babies, you don't want to have any drafts, they will get sick. If they get sick, there's not much you can do for them. Uh, you do not have to treat, be to teach a chick how to eat and drink. They immediately, the day they're out of the shell, the second they're out of the shell, and they can dry it off and walk around, they're eating and drinking. No mom has to show them. It's, it's built in. <laughs> Pretty nice. It's built in. Uh, you want to start your chicks on a diet of medicated chick starter. We'll get into it a little bit later. Medicated chick starter, which you're going to feed for the first six weeks and nothing else. Medicated chick starter and all the fresh water they can drink. Uh, again, using a heat lamp. Uh, try to, the infrared ones are better than the white because it just causes volcanism issues. Uh, a chick water, a small, not a great big water that the chick can get into and drown. A chick water should be used and plug, give them plenty of clean water. Don't let them run out of water. And don't let the water get all green and gross. It's just not good for the birds. Uh, you want to try to, wherever you're going to have your chicks, you don't want them in a square room, a square box. You want to round it. Chickens tend to be scared and they'll pile up in corners. And when they pile up in corners, the ones at the bottom of the pile don't make it. So if you make your pen, whatever, where you're going to raise these and brood these, use a circular cardboard, or you can make some, cut some cardboard and make it circle. Don't make it square. They will, they will get in corners and you will lose some. Um, Again, raise the heat, raise the, uh, the heat vent below the temperature. Uh, if the chicks, I say this later on, if the chicks are all scattered away from that heat in the bottom of your brooder, they're too hot. They're too hot. Raise your light lamp up a little bit. If they're all underneath together, all you know, scrunched together, they're too cold. Lower the ball a little bit. 
But they'll tell you, they'll tell you when they're too hot, too cold. They're all over the place, just under the heat, out here, there, eating, drinking, life is good. But if they're all scrunched under the heat lamp, it's too cold. Um, you can probably put them in your chicken coop in 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, I would keep them in your chicken coop for a good week or two. Don't let them out raw. Let them get to know home. This is home. The chicken coop is my food is. The chicken coop is where my water is. Keep them in the chicken coop. They gotta know where home is. Because they'll come home every evening to me in the chicken coop to roost. And if you don't have it at home, they'll go outside or wherever. Again, in this area, we have so many creatures going out who love your chickens. We just love your chickens. And from my experience, once they find you, once you're found, look out. They'll be back. They will be back. Uh, it's pretty sad to see. And they'll, some of the weasels, for example, will ruin your chicken. If you can get any chicken coop, will kill it, bite off every single head of your ch every chicken in the pen. And you then leave. I think it just drinks the blood. It's pretty sad. In fact, it's very, very sad. I've been to it. People have called me to their house. What happened here? And all the chickens dead, the heads all bitten off, and it was a weasel. And, you know, they're around. They're all around. You drive around at night, you'll see them scurrying across the road. And coyotes are more and more everywhere now. Fall hawks. There's just so many you know, creatures that will love your chickens. Uh, one more thing about chicks, though. Um, sometimes, for improper brooding temperatures, they get a pasty butt, which means the, the fecal material gets mixed up in their feathers and it almost acts like a plug, and it'll plus stop them up. If you don't get rid of it, they will die, because they can't defecate. Okay, you just rinse it in warm water, and they should be fine. Simple thing, and it usually means improper brooding temperatures. If you're seeing um, you know, pasty butts in you know, that area, just rinse it off with warm water, dry it off, and put it back, and she should be just fine. But something to watch. Chickens really do like to roost at night. They like to get up in the air at night. It's their way of being secure. You know, where do all the wild turkeys go at night? In the trees. trees. Up in the trees. Way up in the trees. I work I work at Ranger at Crane's Castle, on a Crane's estate. And it's amazing at nighttime watching. You can look as you know some of the trees you go, you look up there, you can barely see them. They're so far from here. They go up there, you know, they're pretty cool. Um, I will say it again, a screened-in yard is fine, but you've got to have a screened-in top. You've got to have a screened-in top. Those, those hawks can fly right out of your screened-in gun. You see a chick going up in the air. And they will. We, are, we have a lot of red tails around here right now. We have a lot, all kinds of uh, predaceous birds around that we never had. Look at the bald eagle population. <coughs> it's just exploding. It's exploding. Um, but dogs, hawks, wheels, raccoons, and all kinds of predators would love your chickens. Uh, if you take them out of the screen area, because they love to go in your garden. They really do. And I love to let them go in the garden in the fall. They can help clean it up for you. They get all the bugs, all the stuff that got left over that you didn't get. And they, have, they enjoy it. They love scratching it, and, you know, playing in it, and digging around. It's good for them. You need to be there. Oh, they're going to be gone. <laughs> they will be gone. Uh, and then when you leave, if you have to go in the house or something, then you go back in the screen in area, or into the chicken coop. Um, when they come in the chicken coop at night, when you bring them in at night, they'll go in on their own. Especially if you have a roof. <laughs> they'll go in, you don't do a thing. They'll come in the dock, they'll come in the chicken coop. Um, you want to make sure you have a roost frog to jump up on. And a little hint, if you make a chicken coop, you want to make a little roost up in the air, kind of screen it in a little bit, make some kind of wooden screen in the area. It'll defecate, most of the defecation will be in that area. You can pull that thing up, clean that out every couple of days, and keep the, keep the building smelling nicer and not as dirty. If your building's really dirty and stinky, it's your fault, not their fault. You're not cleaning up after enough, you're not, you know, just throwing, just throwing fun stuff, corn, uh, oats, any grain, just throwing it on the shavings. Once or twice, once a day, twice a day, whatever. They'll get in there scratching around the chicken coop. And what's that, by that, they're keeping it dry, turning over those shavings, and it's pretty, pretty nice. So give them a treat once, throw something in the pen, and let them work for it. 
and they're working for it, they will stir up the pen, keep it drier, um, and keep the smells down. And a lot of smells, you know, and, and everything else. said, here, one thing I didn't mention, I do indirectly later on, is rats, mites. Rats, mites. Keep your grain stored in a metal container with a cover. Okay, not a plastic container because they can chew through it. A metal container with a cover. They will, that's what, the worst thing you're going to have is have rats coming onto your property. And usually it's because you're not doing your job right. Rats or, or, or mice. They're around. They're around everywhere. And they will find you if you're a food farmer. That's why I tell you later on here, keep their food in the chicken coop, not outside. Keep the water in the chicken coop, not outside. You don't want to bring them. You don't want to invite them. Let them keep it inside. And when those chickens come in at night, critical. When you bring those girls in at night, when oh, they're all in, you want to have a door you can shut. But not only a door you can shut, a door you can latch. Somehow so they can't get open. Because some of these little critters out there, raccoons, are pretty smart. And they can open that little door. So if you don't latch it somehow, they're going to from the outside open it. So please, please be careful about you know, letting rodents take over. And they will take over if you allow them. And if they're getting in your compost bin, you're not doing your compost bin right. Somebody said, somebody complained to me, a neighbor complained to me one time, well, compost bin just trap rats. I've never had a rat. I've never had a rat. You know, we compost everything. Except, I mean, we no meat. Um, so this is what I was saying about a circle. Make some kind of a circle. These are just waterers. You can get like one lot water in it from a mason jar you can just screw this little, little lid onto it. Simple, cheap, works easy. Uh, little, chick, little chick feeders here. And this is like a four bulb. That's, that would be for like a hundred chicks. That's a four bulb infrared light. So just scale that down a little bit and be perfect for home. But you want it round. And again, you want you can, you can raise and lower this by the chain. You get two feeders, two waterers, and redundancy is very nice in case one gets falls over or something happens, they don't have any water, or something happens to feed, every two tends to be a little bit nicer. Um, and you want to write, write these down. Simple as this, you can do it differently than this, but this is the way I recommend. It's simple, it's easy. Day one, you're going to start them with a medicated chick starter. The medication is a medication for coccidiosis. Coccidiosis is an internal protozoa parasite that will cause you to have bloody droppings. If you notice your birds all of a sudden producing bloody droppings, you probably have coccidiosis. And it's everywhere. There's all different kinds of coccidiosis, but this medication just takes care of coccidiosis. So you're not feeding all these other hormones and all the other drugs. You're just not doing it. Um, after six weeks, you want to put them on a medicated grower. Same medication, but just a grower. Different, different protein levels, different levels of things, but a chicken grower. And it was up to the first day, but I'm going to say to you, after 20 weeks, you want to put them on layer pellets. And pellets versus grain. Pellets versus uh, mash. Well, they don't waste as much on the pellets as they do mash. If they have mash, I try to pick out the corn, believe it or not. They will pick out the corn, because they like the corn better. Um, where a pellet, they don't have that opportunity to eat the whole pellet. Okay, so I recommend for older birds you use pellets. You'll save money, I guarantee it. And it's cleaning. Um, you can give them all the table scraps you want. Anything you want. They'll eat it. They love it. Don't feed them meat, uh, meat products, because it's going to attract other, uh, other critters to your area. And it gets pretty gross after a while, they're just feeding meat and stuff to them. Um, and don't give them, I recommend you don't give them onions and garlic. You, you will taste the onions and garlic in the eggs. If you like garlic eggs, feed them garlic. <laughs> if you like onion eggs, feed them onions. Uh, they love bugs, worms. Uh, if you have vegetables in the garden, like squash and stuff, you have too much of it, throw it on the chicken coop out in the run outside, let them play with it. They'll have a ball. You know, they'll catch something, they'll chase each other, try to get that one worm or something. 
if I'm going around the yard, if I'm, all, I'm a user to be way back, uh, I'll pick off, I'm always picking off bugs and crushing them, whatever. This stole me a chicken coop or something. If you find a this side, this may be gross, I don't mean to gross you out, but if you happen to find a nest of baby mice, baby, baby mice, not even pinkies, not even you fur on them yet, throw them in a chicken coop. Gone. Gone. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to gross you out, but they love them. Very high nutrition, good way to get rid of, rid of your problem. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Uh, chickens do not get the munchies. Chickens eat for body maintenance. They eat what they need to eat. They do not get the munchies. So don't think you're going to overfeed chickens. They need to have food in front of them at all times. Okay? When they're outside, no. But when they're inside, there needs to be a place they can go to eat all the time. They will not overeat. And if you're feeding them mice um, or uh, grains or other things from out in the garden, that's all the better. You've got to be feeding them better for it. And you will notice a flavor, a diff flavor difference in commercial eggs versus your eggs. It'd be better to have a better flavor when you're feeding them grass or green, green vegetables. You, when you buy a, some lettuce, you peel off those other three or four layers, throw them in with the chicken. Don't throw them away. Throw them in with the chicken. They'll love it. Um, Again, keep the chicken feeders in the coop, not outside. Um, egg production. Your commercial egg bird should start laying eggs approximately 22 weeks. And I'll give you a week either way, they will start laying. They will start laying in 22 weeks or so. Um, collect them twice a day. You don't want them getting broken. You don't want birds getting broody because there's so many eggs in a pen. And you can have three or four nest boxes. Then nest box is about a cubic, a cubic square, a, a cubic foot. It's about the size you need for a nest box. You may want to put three or four in there, but you'll find they tend to all lay in one or two all the time. You're always pulling a dozen eggs out of one. And how come they always go in this one? But they do. Uh, this is important for this time of year, critical for this time of year. Uh, not as critical for first year commercial egg birds. They'll lay right through the first winter. But you really want your birds to have 15 hours of light a day. And not a lot of it. 40 watt bulb, these new incandescent or these new energy efficient bulbs. A 40 watt bulb, even smaller, is all they need. It's enough to stimulate their pituitary gland through their eyes and think it's spring. 15 hours, spring. That's when they're supposed to lay their clutch of eggs. So it's another thing we're doing to kind of convince them that keep laying, keep laying, keep laying, and keep taking the eggs away. Okay, so you're finding a little games here, but I would recommend, and I think I say it up here, you, you can buy these little timers that have on off, on off, two of them. So extend the day on both ends. They say turn them on at four or five o'clock in the morning and shut them off at six or seven in the morning. Turn them back on at four or five in the afternoon and shut them off at seven or eight at night. Whatever, but never gives you 15 hours. And you can do it all at the beginning if you want, but you can turn them on at two o'clock in the morning if you want. They don't care. They don't know. They don't care. It's just that light gets into the pituitary gland, believe it or not, it tells them it's spring. What are you doing if they look to the <laughs> Well, you're in, you're, it's not spring. <laughs> Uh, but they are newly, new per, newly purchased um, commercial egg birds will lay that whole winter. They won't stop. They shouldn't stop. If they stop, there's something going on. Uh, until the following fall, September, then they'll, they'll go into a full molt. Molt is losing all their feathers, putting a new, new coat of feathers on. Just like your dog in the fall loses all the fur all over your house and puts all new fur on. In the spring, the same thing happens. Well, chickens molt once a year. Usually not that first year, but after that molt, once a year. And usually when they're molting, they're not laying. They're putting all their energy into producing eggs. I mean, excuse me, producing new feathers versus producing eggs. So they'll tend to stop when it's time to go into a molt. And it's usually September, October, this time of year, the days are getting shorter and shorter. The clock tells them it's time. Get some new feathers on, get ready for winter. Um, as I was starting to say, after a while the shells, they put so much of the calcium into those shells, uh, they, may be, they may be weak, they break easily, 
You can buy a product called calcite in any grain store. It's just a calcium replacement or a calcium replacement. And just you know, throw it in, in their, their feed container. If you want to throw it in the ground and see if they'll scratch at it, do that. That's more preferable. Because I like the scratch and then it's good for the shavings to keep them turned over again. Okay? Um, and again, expect, expect approximately 300 eggs from these commercial birds. Now, if you're buying the bantams, of buying some of the big fancy birds, you're not going to get that kind of production. They're not bred for that. They weren't bred for production or bred for breeding and to meet all of the requirements of the breed. But they'll lay quite a few eggs for you. Uh, I just, we're going to talk about eggs a little bit here. As, I don't know how it is, but if you look at the air cell up there, when the egg is first laid, there's no air cell. And the second it starts to cool down, this air cell forms. The inner shell membrane comes down a little bit. As the eggs get older, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I would guarantee that almost all of you have bought eggs in a, eggs in a grocery store, and you break it open, and there's a great big air cell in there, and it just spreads over your whole frying pan. That is not a fresh egg. Nowhere near a fresh egg. Um, and this, had, this is on the side, which this is on the front. Next time you break open an egg, look for a little white spot, a little white spot about that size on the yolk. That is the true egg. That's the blastoderm. That will allow the sperm when we turn to the chick. Everything else in here, everything in here, especially the yolk, is all, all energy to make a new chick. From that one little circle on an egg. One way you can tell if you do enough eggs, if the egg is fertile or not, that blastoderm or germinal disc will be bigger on a fertile egg. It'll have divided a couple times, then it stops until they get laid on and get the temperature up and the whole process goes. So every egg has a germinal disc on it. Look next time, you say, oh, what's that thing? And sometimes you see these white ropey material on the egg. What, uh, what's that inside the eggs? That's called a chalaza or a chalaza. The purpose of which is to keep that yolk centered in the egg. Mother Nature is pretty smart. Mother Nature is pretty smart. The purpose of that is to keep the yolk in the center of the egg. So in development, they'll develop a little bit easier, along with turning the eggs. And the stick albumin, thin albumin, I won't go into all that. Uh, I don't even know what shell. You can start starting to have very soft shells. They need calcium. They need calcium. Uh, when you buy eggs in the grocery store, this is how they're based. You buy them in general arts, a lot of flour, medium, pollock, pea wheat. You won't see these anywhere. These you use, they break these out for other purposes. You probably won't see pollock anywhere. Uh, the rest, all the four you'll see. But if you look at what you're getting for a, do for a dozen niggas, even though it's 30 ounces per dozen, so that's almost two pounds of egg. For, what's a dozen jumbos go for right now? Do we know? Mm -hmm. I know. Buck fifty, buck seventy-five. Eggs, eggs are about one of the cheapest sources of protein we can we can have today. Eggs and chicken. Believe it or not, the very can you figure that's one dozen eggs is thirty ounces. That's quite a bit of quite a bit of bang for your buck. Um, so you can see why <coughs> people eat a lot of eggs. They're good for you. Uh, we can get into the whole medical thing about cholesterol, but one week, it's good for you. One week, eggs have an enzyme in them that breaks down the cholesterol, and eggs are great for you. So use discretion. That's all I can say, use discretion. If you have a cholesterol problem, well, maybe you should pay a little more attention. Um, but anyway, that's just the size of eggs. And again, if you look big out what you're paying for eggs per dozen, for, and for a per pound of protein, it's cheap, cheap, cheap protein. Uh, you can make yourself a little egg can with a coffee can. Do they still have coffee cans? <laughs> no, they can have coffee cans anymore. They have most of them plastic now, aren't they? I don't know. Uh, but you can make yourself a little light any way you can. It doesn't need to be a lot. It's like a 60 watt bulb, a little hole, and that will show you the inside. You, you spin it, and you'll see things inside there. Uh, you've all seen a blood spot in an egg? A little spot of blood inside an egg? Um, it's supposed to be graded out, but some of them are so hard to see you can't see them. And everybody always has the idea that a blood spot means that these birds 
uh, are fertile, and these eggs are fertile. It's got nothing to do with it whatsoever. When she releases the ovum, the yolk, sometimes a little blood vessel breaks, a little blood vessel, and it gets in the whole system, and it puts the yolk and everything around it. Um, reproductive tract is divided into the ovary and the oviduct. Uh, it drops an ovary, an ovum up here, into the, this is the infidibrium, like the catcher's mitt, and it takes us down through the whole system, and poof, there's an egg right there, going to be out in a few hours. It takes about 24 hours to manufacture an egg. 24 and a half hours. Uh, you'll notice these, like, you notice the yolk is more prevalent here than over here. That's showing you to get a little bit older, a little bit older. Why it's more prevalent? Because that that's stuck inside. It's getting more watery, looser, and you can see it more. So that's like one of the very ways we create eggs. Um, you can see the blood spot real easy here. And up there, you can see a blood spot. And that's that blood spot broken out. Nothing wrong, that's, that's just a bad blood spot. <laughs> that's terrible. And you see them. Uh, commercially, you would never use something like this, but to make sure that, that nobody is playing games, the USDA uses something called a haw meter. A haw meter that measures the thickness of the thick albumin to tell exactly what grade it is. That's how precise they become. Uh, that's just a picture of the same thing. Uh, thick albumin, thin albumin, and you get down into these eggs here. That's the one eggs you buy sometimes in the grocery stores just take over the whole frying pan. And you try to, try to do it over easy with these, they break every time. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, I'm not going to get into the internal audit. I put it up there in case anybody had questions. Uh, sometimes, I will say, sometimes the chicken could become crop bound. Something could, it could have eaten something that's not letting it get through the crop. And the crop is just a storage pouch. So you can just pick the chicken up and gently massage the crop. Usually you can solve the problem. Just massage it. You won't hurt it. Yep. How do you know if they have that? Oh, you'll see the crop getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then getting more and more sluggish, slowing down, something's wrong. But no food's getting into the system. It's all the way to that pouch. Chickens are totally different than we are. Chickens don't have teeth. Except for the egg tooth. Uh, it goes into the crop, and for the crop, it goes into the gizzard. The gizzard is nothing but nothing but a big muscle that just constantly grinds. And that's why you see chickens, uh, excuse me, that's why you see birds outside always picking up pebbles, all uh, sand, going picking up sand. Why are they going after the sand? They use that as an abrasive for the seeds they eat, if they break them down. So it's perfectly normal for them to be doing that. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Free range, you know, there's a million benefits of free range. You know, fertilizing the area, the soil, insect control, they love insects. Um, I've got pages of this, I said I'm not going to read it all. But, you know, it's a more natural. Chickens love free range. Chickens love, chickens love running around the yard. And they really do. It's kind of fun to see them running around the yard. But you're asking for trouble. Um, again, predators. And this is something you'll notice. You'll get to know, if you have chickens, you'll get to know if there's something wrong with the chicken just by listening to them. They will talk to you. You can tell when there's an upset when something's getting them. If there's something, some, excuse me, some kind of danger around, they will be squawking away in there. You should be able to pick up on that. Because they will talk to you. Um, make sure you have cows that can get out of the way if, they're, if you're going to free range them. Um, a lot of livestock guardians are, I don't know if anybody has any those around here. Uh, a rooster will help. A rooster, if you, as soon as he sees a bird of prey, he'll start making his certain call. All the girls, all the girls will scurry on the cover someplace. So if you want to keep him outside, and if you have, if you have a rooster, he will tell them. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the ones you can buy right now, little these portable chicken coops are on wheels. You can move it around so they can eat up this and ruin this part of your lawn, <laughs> then move it over and eat, ruin this part of your lawn. But it's kind of fun doing it that way. Um, yeah, watch out. If you, if you have outside birds, you don't know where they're going to lay their eggs. <laughs> they, can, they can find a place you're never going to find. So that's why you'd rather keep them can, can find. And they will, they're not picky eaters. Your beautiful values, your beautiful whatever you have at home, they like to. 
So if you think they're going to, oh, I'm not going to touch her medallions because she, you know, no, it doesn't work that way. Um, they will pretty much come to the ch your chicken coop, come in the chicken coop every night just by even not doing anything. They'll come in, they know you're going to come and lock the door every night. They know it. You may have to show up once or twice, you know, they chick 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 and drop some corn and stuff and fall. <coughs> you shouldn't have to, you really shouldn't. Um, I'm going to go with that one. Yeah. Um, there are so many different, if anybody's been shopping and happened with all the grain stores, everybody's making chicken coops all of a sudden, backyard chicken coops. And they're only good for like a half dozen hens, but some of them are bigger. And they are all different ones, they're pretty, they're pretty funny. Um, I just grabbed these off the internet. There's, there's when he, that's a nest, nest box is right there, but there is a screen in the yard. Uh, that's the one on wheels. <laughs> May seem strange, but you know the birds have a place to go in, go in and eat. The good birds have a place to lay their eggs, and they get a chance to go outside and, and enjoy it. Then you can move it around the yard. Well, it's not like that, but um, you can make it yourself for probably five hundred bucks. You probably buy it for I don't know, a couple thousand, thousand. Who knows? <coughs> And I go to the green store and see some of the stuff they're selling and just shake my head, you know. But some of them, they make it out of plastic and the stuff doesn't last forever. Yeah. That's one good thing. Uh, that's somebody homemade quick one, but I want, the reason I like this one is again to show you the covering. He's covered, there, covered everything. I want you to see what he did here. He's got everything covered. You know, and this, you know, I know there's a door inside here that she gets down and gets locked shut at night. The bridge will come in again at night. Pretty simple. This guy did it very simple. Just some, some little piece of wood he got, piece of whatever, and just sew it up. The birds don't care. They're easy. <laughs> they don't want luxury. Unless they have food and water, they're pretty good. Uh, I know that, that's not a bad little chick coop right there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know that this, this floor in here is green, not wood. I don't know that. Um, periodicals, stuff to find information on, Backyard Chicken Magazine, Backyard Poultry Magazine, they're just full of knowledge. Um, right here, right here at your, your the Raleigh Library, How to Raise Chickens, and the FFA logo, I think it makes it even better. Uh, every, everything you need to know about how to raise chickens. And, yeah the next book, by the way. Uh, another how to raise poultry. Not just chicken, poultry, that means the ducks in there. Turkeys, a lot more people are raising their own turkeys. And they can't kill them because they're so pretty, they won't kill them. Um, but these are in your library right here. Uh, they're really, really nice. The organic farming manual. Um, good book, I've seen this book before. It's a really nice book. Really, really nice book. Um, the Farmstead Egg Guide and Cookbook in your library here in Raleigh. And I wouldn't be surprised if they had some more raising poultry the modern way or some of the other books that are out there. There are a lot of books and a lot more coming because people care more and more about what they're eating and what, where they're getting their food. Um, the Co-op and Agway both offer just a, a morning or an afternoon class in the spring. I don't know if I don't think there's a fee. I think it's just to get by their chicks and buy their grain will give you a lesson in how to raise chickens. You know, I'm not positive about that, but they have a small class. Essex Aggie no longer offers a night course that you can offer. I love teaching about that. Well, we had a fun time. Um, but that's gone. It may happen again someplace. I don't know. Um, question. What do you people have for questions for me? I kind of touched on everything. It was a real hard picking out. But we've been out. Um, you ask me questions. You live in Mountain Yard, how do you get back? Um, if you drop corn and kind of chick, 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 they'll follow you. Don't they know. They'll, they'll know you. They'll know you personally. You call chick, 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 they'll come. They may have a little corn ready for them. You should have seen chickens in the same coop. You shouldn't. Because they have different, they carry different strains of coccidiosis, and one can go to the up, back and forth. And ducks are so much a slob. 
<laughs> you know, uh, I can tell you from the fair, a great example of top field fair, and it happens every year. We water, our, water and feed our birds at the fair very, very well. We're constantly watering the ducks, constantly. I have more volunteers for watering, watering, watering. <laughs> and I'll have somebody come up and be, sir, 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 those ducks don't have any water. They they oh, they're going to have water. And I can turn into the MSPCA and they have to come down and investigate me. So what I do is say, come with me, sir. Let's go for a walk. I'll go get a walk in. I'll fill right, fill right to the top. Here you go. Water the ducks, please. And by the time he gets from the beginning of the row to the end of the row, the ones done the other end have already splashed theirs all over the place. And if you have ducks, you know just what I'm talking about. And it makes a real mess in the bottom of the pen. That's my worst part of the top field fair is duck pens. Because they get so good. They clean thoroughly every single morning. I mean, thoroughly. They, clean. they take everything out. They, just, they love that water. They're ducks. They're ducks. They should love water. But I wouldn't keep with chickens until they are so messy that way. They're going to just ruin your pen. Yes? How much room do you need for a chicken? Um, two to three square feet. For a chicken? So if you just bought an uh, eight by ten piece of plywood, okay, uh, you can make a chicken coop out of that. I had a chicken coop I made out of an eight by ten piece of plywood. We made the wall, we made the whole thing uh, so we could bolt it and unbolt it. I used to, used to take my chicken coop to Burlington Mall. So, um, North Shore Mall, right in the middle of the mall, I had chickens with a rooster, purposely. People, what the heck is that? People would come up, what's that a rooster doing in there? Um, and I just made it out of, again, two by, uh, uh, yeah, plywood, plywood. An eight foot square. Yeah, eight, 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 64 square feet. I'm not the child, I'm right. Yeah, you got plenty of room. <laughs> plenty of room. And, and they eight, don't need eight, a lot of room. Eight, well, seven chickens in a rooster. Yeah. And they got, that's 7, 14, 21, so you can put yeah, three times. Yeah, they'd rather be out. They're all playing. I don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah, well, the neighbors, the other kids they are going to find out, though. They go out the garden. They go <laughs> well, they, they, they love it. They have Five a ball. Five hours that's getting back. They're in there. They're ready. And they come in. They come in on their own. I have called them a couple of times. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Anyway. You will find, if you start raising backyard chickens, they are fun. They all have personalities, believe it or not. And again, they talk. But you can start to not understand. I don't want to be, I'm not a doctor, you know. But they do. You can tell when they're in trouble, when they're out of water, when they're out of food, just by the way they talk, the way they squeak. Cluck, 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 cluck. You, you asked a lot of my questions. We got six birds in June. Um, and uh, they were a lot of fun. They built a coop for them and they free range. You haven't got an egg yet. No, we haven't. No. We're, uh, that, that was my question. When, when should I start looking? Okay, when I, when I tell you how many eggs, uh, how many weeks? It's about 20 now. We so 20 so you, you should, right now, you should see your hens putting on, putting up comb. <coughs> your birds, I guarantee your birds right now are starting to get their comb and waddles are starting to get bigger and bigger. Okay. That's a precursor. So, I bet you a couple of weeks you'll have eggs. Well, the funniest thing, we uh, built this Taj Mahal of a coop. I, by, I've been in a lot of them, yeah. Four by five feet, you know, I would, you know, like I said, six birds, and they all started sleeping on top of each other in a nesting box. They would roost. Yeah. So then finally, um, they all started roosting, except for the rooster and one other, one other, and they just wouldn't go on the roost. So I covered the nesting box, and then they got really mad. They didn't like that. <laughs> And the rooster, to this day, I, I had to physically take him and put him on the really? roost. Really? And after a couple of times... But he's doing it now, right? doing it now. Yeah, yeah they yeah. learn. They learn quick. But we keep, you know, you, you go on the internet, there's so much information out there. You don't know what's real or what's not, but there's this big argument about, well, I keep my food outside the coop. You know, ours are free-ranging. We, It's funny, We, when they were chicks, we put them outside, just uh, when they were small. And we had we lived in a very wooded area, and five hawks flew into the yard and sat on the play structure in our yard, just sitting there watching. So it would really? be a problem. But since then, we we since they've been in the coop, they're out free ranging all day long. We have a half acre that's fenced in; and they're out in the yard all the time. Nice. So would they go back in the coop to lay their eggs? Or they should. They should. Or would they be out in the yard? Like no, they should go back in the little nest. They want to lay in the nest. So you're, so you're saying that the, the food and the water should be in the coop? I would recommend it, because if you don't, you're going to have the starlings coming in your yard, uh, eating, eating your grain, and spreading disease. 
Where, and then the chicken coop, you don't have those kind of issues? Because we kept it outside you know, in the morning. The first thing they do is they run out and they look for that. Oh, food. yeah. I, I would keep it inside. I would really keep it inside. They're going to be mad at first because they're going to be changing their routine now. Right. Yeah, so they are very routine. Oh, like, my gosh, they are. They changed something. It was right covered up the election <laughs> box. And they went nuts. Like, what are you doing with but, so that's so true, so so true. And then in the winter, what do you worry about in the winter time? Okay, you want to have your chicken coop, which I didn't get into here very well, because that would have been another hour. Um, you want to have your chicken coop always facing south. If you have windows in it, you want to have windows in it facing south, so it takes advantage of the summer. I mean, excuse me, the winter sun. It warms it up in there. You want to have air baffles up top of each end, so air can get through there and get that the smells and the moisture out. But you always want to have it facing south with windows on it. On you can open them and close them. Air vents up top? You Pardon mean, me? In the roof air vents, you mean? Like yeah, yeah. If you have roof overhangs or building a little bit, you want to have openings in there for air to get in. And the same thing in the back for air to get out. If it's going to be really cold, you may want to put some little block in there for the night. It's going to get really, really cold. If you, if you block them up too much and you have a bunch of chickens, you're going to have wood in there and your eyes are going to water on the ammonia. If you have you know, got chickens before, you know what I'm talking about. They produce a lot of ammonia in their fecal material. And if you don't get it aired out, it's going to start to smell. What do you think about the deep litter method for the winter? The what? Deep litter method, that's called? Um, it keeps the bottom cold and the bottom, the bottom coming up. Um, they love it. The more the merrier, because the more you have, the more they like to fluff in it. Yeah. I'm sure they're always taking a bath in it. Always. You know, they love it. So it's not no problem whatsoever. No. I would use shavings though. Don't use hay as a bedding. Hay is not meant for a bedding. Hay gets all gooky and sticky. You know, it's just no. Shavings. So for the nesting boxes? Uh, yeah, in the nesting box of shavings. Okay. Clean them out easy. You throw some more in very easy. Boop, boop, boop. And if any fecal material is very easy to get out with the hay, it just gets all... <coughs> That's my recommendation. And also a little more expensive. Yeah, yeah. But it's worth it. Mine won't go in the nesting boxes yet. They only go on the roof. <laughs> you should have taken. You should at the very beginning, kind of help them out, put them in the nesting box. Yeah. Sometimes you have to help them a little bit, not, they don't catch on. All it's right. probably going to be hard now. But if, 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 yeah, I see. A, if I saw a bird in there getting ready to set, I immediately pick her up from the nesting box. Uh, they go she on may or may not like you. I only have two. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's a bad idea to just have two. Um, by law, not allowed to sell less than, I think they've gone up, I think 10. You can't buy two chicks legally. I got them from a school I work Yeah, for. yeah, I, that's where they come from. The school yeah. you call them all the time for schools that have chicks. Oh, we have this many chicks, could you take them please? And I can usually find a place for them, but the grain stores will not sell you two chicks. Huh. It's against the law. And it's a stop, it's a stop. But used to happen at Topfield Fair, people can, can I have can I can I buy it? Can I have two chicks? Uh, I have a beautiful place for them in the third to fourth tenement in Lawrence. Um, so we can stop it. No no chicks leave Topfield Fair during the fair anymore. Unless they're going to a farm that we know. Uh, we just don't I can't do that to the chicks. <laughs> not fair. Yeah. And then most of the time we're gonna die anyway, that's just not right. I thought you said in the very beginning that you can also buy the older, like, like not go through the whole brewing thing, just buy the older ones. Some places, some places will sell you started pullets. Mm -hmm. Started pullets are 20 weeks old. You're right where your birds are right now. And I'm not sure what they charge for them, but you don't have to deal with any of that beginning stuff. They're going to start laying in a couple of weeks. Or they just started laying. They probably don't like the new environment. Well, uh, but if you get them right away and put them in right away, they'll get used to it pretty quick if you put them all together. What you don't want to do, you be very, very careful. The one thing, and you know what I'm going to say, the pecking order. You've all heard of the pecking order. The pecking order is true with chickens. There's a number one chicken down to the bottom chicken. And you can always tell the bottom chicken, she's always in the corner. She always try to sneak out to eat and they'll go after her so she sneak, runs back in. But they have a pecking order, and you can tell the number one in the pecking order too. They don't screw around with her. And that works its way down. They do have a pecking order. So, if you bring in two more birds, for example, you bring in two more birds, your two birds are going to be very, very upset, and they're going to beat the crap out of those birds. All of a sudden, 
Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really tough adding birds to a, an established flock. You're gonna have, you're gonna have problems. And if you can watch them, maybe you know, get them, get them close to the other birds so they can see each other in some kind of screen in something, and get them used to each other a little bit. Then try that. But you better watch them. You may come in the next morning and find a mess. I don't know why that is, but it's got to do with the whole pecking order thing. So be careful by adding different birds at any, any time you want, because you're going to have trouble. We had one bird, we found a wound on her neck, a deep one. And we were wondering where it was from, and we thought, and then I saw the rooster go after one at the same spot. Is that possible? Um, unlucky, oh, he could be an inexperienced rooster, number one. Because usually if you, have, if you have a rooster, you're going to find, after they get older, all the feathers up in here are going to be gone. Because when he jumps on her, he grabs a hold of the feathers right up here. And when he treads on her, his toenails on the back of her back, and he rips the feathers off her back. That's how you can tell you have a rooster, he's doing his job. Uh, and by the way, if, you have, if you're going to have a rooster, all you need is one rooster for 12 hens. And you, he, you can probably do 20 and keep everybody happy because chickens, unlike humans, Chickens have the ability to store a sperm for like 14 days. Okay, so if they get bred, they can continue to lay eggs for 14 days and they'll, and they'll all be fertile up further. And that's why one rooster is needed, but you don't need so few roosters, because they, they do the job very well. And you'll notice, you will notice right away if you haven't noticed it already, when you walk into your chicken coop, you're going to start noticing if you don't already, the, the chicken scrunching down. And you walk in there. You see them scrunching down? That's they want to get bread. So that, that's telling you that eggs are coming soon. When they get to be about that age, they'll just scrunch right down and just kind of waiting for the rooster. And the rooster probably just doesn't have it right yet. <laughs> just trying to learn how to crow. Yeah, well, you're going to be thankful for these quiet days. <laughs> Any other questions? How long do chickens lay eggs for? Chickens will lay eggs for five or six years, okay. but it is my experience that after three years or so, the egg production goes down and goes down, and it gets to be not worth it. The eggs are going to end up costing you so much per dozen that it's just, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Ten dollars per dozen eggs, you know. But people, I know um, Appleton Farms, they're selling organic, all natural, free range, I don't know what they're calling it this week over there, but. Seven fifty a dozen, and they can't produce them fast enough. Wow. Seven fifty a dozen, wow. and they can't produce them fast enough. They, as soon as they put them in that store, they're gone. Just, just amazing. Kind of well, and uh, <clears throat> this buy local, and we at Top Hill Fair are really involved with buy local, really trying to you know, support it. Um, is big. People really, really care now where their food's coming from. We all really care. My wife is buying more and more organic, natural foods, even though they cost more money. You know, some of the stuff you're buying, you don't know what's in it. You know, and I truly, truly believe all the preservatives and the coverings and all the crap they put on our food to keep it going is what's causing all the issues with all the people. And every day I hear a new horror story. It's like, where did that come from? You know, all these little weird things, you know. And you all hear them too. You know, you have a friend that just died from Something you've never heard of in your life. Where'd that come from? Um, nothing to do with chicken, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Just another quick one. Go ahead. So the winter's coming, so um, in terms of, will they go out in the winter? Yep. The snow? yep. If it's really snow, like snowy, they probably won't, but they won't. And come right back in, probably. And is there any worry about The only thing you're going to have to be concerned about in the winter is water. Frozen you can buy, You can buy water heaters that go in the water. You can buy little pans that go under, underneath the, your waterer and keep it warm. But do not heat your chicken coop. You don't need to heat your chicken coop. If you've got to seal up well, if you've got to seal up well, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Sealed up well, but events. Hmm. A little bit. Like Just that. Yeah, a little bit. You've got to have some air going in and out. Then one thing I would say with your rooster, if, it's, if there's going to be a really, really cold spell coming up, you may want to go out there with a can of Vaseline and put some Vaseline on the comb of the rooster and the waddles of the rooster and the comb of the chickens. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they will freeze and get frostbite. So just a little Vaseline will do, do the job. Um, if, you, if you 
No, no. Because they'll be outside in the summer anyway. They won't stay in there, they'll be out. But I would insulate. But you gotta keep that prop, you gotta get some air through there. You've got to get air through there. They don't need uh, uh, No, no, you don't need to heat them. No, you don't need to heat them. I just uh, played in <coughs> the northwest of Maine. A friend of mine had chicken. You go down to 30 below a lot. You go in the uh, pen. Some of them would just have stops left. Like I said, what happens? The toes froze. The toe froze. And she just thought, she already told you the answer to it right here. You told him the answer already. Right? What? At the bottom of your pen? You have pen. Uh, the the more stuff you put down, and the more shavings you put, the warmer they're going to stay. They're yeah. not going to get that. So they're they're able to have that. Yeah. They bury themselves in shit. Yeah. Well, but, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, put the, the combs in the water will freeze and get frostbite. Right. And if you put gasoline or something like that on it, it will solve that problem. That's it? Mm -hmm. Wow. I hope I answered your questions. I hope I did what I was supposed to do here tonight. It's been my pleasure from Top Field there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.